Welcome to our last segment uh, on the topic of agape love. This is Pastor Patrick Angura from Pearl Haven Christian Center. Uh, let's wind it up today by looking at Romans chapter 5 verse 8 to 9 which says, But God demonstrated his love for us by the fact that the Messiah died for us while we were yet sinners or still sinners. That's what the Bible says about us and that is extremely true. God did not wait for us to become righteous. He didn't wait for us to become any better before he could send his son to die for us. While we are still in our mess, I don't know where you were, I know where I was, but in that state, God still chose to send his son to die for us so that then he'll bring us to himself. Now, the last section of this our segment of this type of love is the universality of uh, the agape love. We see from there that it's all encompassing. This love is universal. Each of us, it doesn't look for people that are related. Whether you're a stranger, whether you are what, this love is able to reach you and bring you to God. You see, Whenever the Greeks made reference to the word agape, <clears throat> uh, to them it meant general empathy or loving kindness for all people, including our human enemies. As we are told in Matthew 5, verse 43 to 46, the Bible says, love your enemies. That's a difficult one. But you see, the Bible also tells us that though, you know, in this life, our enemy is not flesh and blood. It's the devil. Sometimes we, we, some, we, get, we begin to think that our enemy is our friend, is our sister, is our brother who is really flesh and blood. But let me wind this up uh, like this. You know, referring to Agape Love, someone, I, I came across somebody who said that when you look at God's love, God loved us for no reason. You know, we didn't have any reason for Him to love us. As, Society teaches us to love for reasons, as I said earlier, for what we get, for what we might, you know, attain, for the status we might get. He loved us for no reason. Because look, look at this. In the death of Christ, we see a perfect picture of God's love in the cross of Jesus Christ. We are not good enough. God desires perfection. And we all fell short, or usually fall short of uh, this perfection. And yet he still loved us. We were wicked before the Holy Judge, and yet he still loved us. God, out of his love, went ahead and crushed his perfect son for very undeserving people. Those who are saved are regenerated, and today they are called saints. God really extended to us the best. That's the only love that would save us, not love that would require conditions from us. So there you have it. I put it all to you. This love takes, you know, one being, de be deliberate. You can't love accidentally. You cannot. You have to be deliberate about it. It's going to cost time. It's going to, 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 to somebody define love as the extent to which you are willing to be inconvenienced. So if you're not willing to be inconvenienced, then you cannot love. Agape love requires that you go even reach out to those who are opposed to you. It's also been said that no one can resist love. It's powerful. Love is powerful. And don't preach that. Even when you are preaching the gospel, love breaks hearts. So people have tried to do anything. And, you know, in families, people try to fight, slap. That just wasn't it. It doesn't. What breaks people down is love. So that they come to a point and they look at themselves and say, but even after I have done this, even after I have said this, even after I have denied uh, this gentleman or this lady this, she still loves me. That breaks a man's heart more than sticks, more than blows. It doesn't help. This is the love that God commands us to extend. And as I've looked at uh, it with you, it's in scripture. This love is poured in us. We have the nature of God. We have the DNA of God. And this is the DNA 
of agape love. I hope you've been blessed by this. God bless you so much. Amen.